Hey. Well, this is the second part to the another video I made. The it's episode 13. So this is episode 13, part 2. Okay. First one was all about what I've been do what I've been up to since I've been <laughs> gone, which has been I think my last video was 11 months ago. Yeah. So it was what I've been doing and my, it was a craft haul. All the stuff I've, all the craft stuff I've bought during quarantine and even before. So, yeah. Now this video is going to be all about Summer Fling TBR slash um, library haul because I got all the books for Summer Fling except one at the library. And then the rest is going to be a Goodwill haul. Because I, well, I went once when stuff started opening back up, like maybe in June, the end of June, beginning of July, I went. But that's the only time I've been. But I did get a lot of books then. But other than that, I had been a bunch like three or four times before that and I got a lot of books <laughs> I think I counted and there was 35 but that's counting the library books which are there's six and then one so there's like 30 books like 29 30 books that I got from Goodwill at different times so, yeah, and just disregard my hair, it's a hot mess, so, so, let's jump right into it, it's the Summer Fling, it's hosted by Sarah at Steeped in Books, it's her baby, she usually does, um, the Summer Romance Bingo, which is three months, but since this year's all over the place, she decided to pare it down and make it simpler. So it's now for the month of August. It's the Summer Fling. And she has a little, it's not a bingo card. It's just, it's a 4x3 or 3. It's either 4x3 or 3x4. I'm not sure which way it is. If I can somehow put it in, it won't be like picture in picture, but if I can put a picture in separate from a video, the video, I will, and it'll either be like a little right here somewhere, or at the end of the video, and then she decided to do that, so, and also I think it was because August is like romance month, or something like that, so it's the summer fling, that's romance and you basically just read romance but there's 12 prompts so I'll put in the prompt card if I can like I said and there's other people that host it or co-hosting it with her and a lot of those people it I really can't remember everybody I the only one I really do remember and I'm very very sorry to everybody but I remember that one person's name is Chloe but I cannot remember her channel name I remember another the one that I really know because I already watched her channel is Elizabeth at Lizzie Fay Loves Books and other than that I can't remember anybody's name but I will try my best and uh, put them in the description below and so here's my TBR and I'm gonna be looking on my phone at to f have the prompts I've got all the things and I got I don't have just one book for each challenge I have multiple books that meet more than one challenge so 
Yeah. But for the first one, it is Down Home Country is the first prompt. So that's like a cowboy romance or small town or whatever. So I went with cowboy. And the first name I thought of was Linda Layall Miller. Because I always see her having cowboy romance books. So the first one is Montana Creed. And this is the Montana Creed series. So it's, and it follows three brothers? Or something like that? I don't really remember. But it's Montana Creed, and then the one in this book is Logan. So, yeah. Yeah, you can't really see a face. But, yeah, that's it. And... It's just about, he's a cowboy, or a rancher, or something, I'm not really sure. And then there's a divorced mom, Brianna Grant, and he's her neighbor, so she has boys, and they, he's good with them. That's really all I know. And then for Big City Life, I've got Hot in Here by Lori Foster and this has got three different uh, stories in it and they're really short so Unbound, Tailspin, and An Honorable Man and that's what the cover looks like <sighs> and it was so funny when I told my mom I was telling her the prompts for it and I was telling her, like, that it had, uh, um, did he escape on it? She was like, yeah, well, that's not the first thing I noticed when I looked at that cover. <laughs> um, so, me neither. <laughs> so, here's just my handy. <laughs> but it does. <laughs> Way back in background. I don't know what the city is, but there's a city escape. <laughs> um... And I don't have one for author of color, just because I didn't do good with this. So when I go back to the library, I will be getting, I'll, I'll probably, I don't know who I'm going to get, but I'll figure it out and get it. It'll be later in the month, so please don't anybody attack me. And then the hot and spicy is going to be hot in here. Yeah, you can tell that'll be spicy. But I've also got another one. It's also by Lori Foster. And it's called Too Much Temptation. And this is about Grace Jenkins and Noah. It doesn't say his last name. So. Yeah. And that's really all I know. But. Yeah. It's not as spicy of a cover. But if you read the back. The back does. Um. He wants to possess those cards that go on forever. To savor her sweet innocence. So. Yeah. That lets me. That makes me think it's going to be a little spicy. Or maybe a little more than a little. <laughs> So, yeah. Um, Dark and Dangerous? I thought this might go for that because it said something on the back about um, Brianna Grant, who was a, the divorced mom, about her, uh, an unknown enemy vandalizes her home. So, I thought maybe there might be some danger in it. Maybe, um, Logan comes to her rescue or something. I'm not really sure, but, yeah, seems kind of dangerous. So, let me find somewhere to set these. Sorry, we're reaching. Um, the next one 
is sweet and clean and I've got two for this I've got on a clear day by Debbie Maycomber and I've also got another Debbie Maycomber marriage between friends so I figured those two would be sweet clean because that's usually what David McCumber writes. And I don't have anything for road trip. And I'm just, I'm really not going to try to find anything. I'm not too worried about it. So, maybe some of these have something about people having a road trip. But the Friends to Lovers, I thought Marriage Between Friends would be perfect for that prompt. Um, and maybe this one, this is one that I, the one I didn't get from the library. And it's the fourth and final book in the Bride Quartet by Nora Roberts. And it's all about, the series is about these four friends that form a um, a wedding planning business. One is the first one was about the photographer. Second one was about the the one that does the the florist, and the third one was about the caterer, wedding cake maker, and then this last one is about I think her name's Parker. I've already started it, but I can't even... Yeah, her name's Parker. And it's, um... She's like the one in charge doing all the office stuff. She's like the one keeping everybody else in line. So, and this is Parker's story. In each book, you get a different one of the friends and their romance. So, this one, Parker and a friend mm, kind of her brother more her brother's friend but he's kind of been around the family a little they kind of become friends in another book in like the last the third book I think yeah he's a mechanic and then her car messes up so they kind of become friends and then she finds out well she meets him and then finds out he's friends with her brother and stuff. Or used to be friends with her brother or something. And then in this one they form their romance. Um, yeah. And then for disability rep. No. The next one is diversity. And I thought maybe this one it's um once in every life by Kristen Hanna and I know the cover doesn't uh, make you think this but I think I'm not positive but I think there may be Native American something in here because there's a like a quote from a Native American and then that's like the intro thing, like right before the first chapter, it's got that quote, and then it has, um, it has something talking about, I saw something while flipping through it about Native Americans, so I think this is, that's what that's going to be about, and then disability rep is, Hold on one second. Is this one? And I'm not sure if I'm going to read both stories in here or if I'm just going to read the first one. But it's. First one is Starlight. Yeah. And the main character. Main. 
person? I think the guy, the love, it's the love story, and I think the guy is going blind, and then in the second one, there's a guy and a woman, I think, I think the man and the woman are both in wheelchairs, but one is only temporary, and the other is permanent, so, yeah, that's for disability. And old school historical. I'm gonna do, gonna use this one because it goes. This was wrote in like '92, I think, with the when I looked at the copyright date. And then some of them said it, when I was flipping through it, it's got different parts that have dates, and some of the dates are '93, and other dates are 1873 so I think it's like dual timelines kind of thing going back and forth so I think that'll work and then the last one is category romance which means like a harlequin or if you're in the UK, Mills and Bone. Um, but it's a Harlequin imprint or like some kind of Harlequin Harlequin <laughs> book. So that would be Marriage Between Friends. This is a Harlequin Mira. Mira. M I R A. Romance. And I'm not really sure what I don't know if that's like I don't know a lot of books said that and then on a clear day by her is also one just says it right up to the top and then the Montana Creeds book this one is a it just says Harlequin Romance, so I don't know what imprint it is or whatever, but it says it right there, so yeah. And then Hot in Here by Laurie Foster. The other Laurie Foster is not. It is Zebra, Contemporary Romance. This one is Harlequin Romance. So, yep. So that's what I'm planning on reading. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books for all twelve prompts. Excuse me for reaching again. I always had to slow down because I have all the other ones to talk about. So now, let's see. I'll start with my, uh, I'll do the Nora Roberts books. Because I had a bunch of them. So, let's see. I'll just start with these two. Um, okay. Alright, I've got the the next always book one in the N Boonesboro trilogy. And it's just like that. And I think this is a um romance as well. But I'm not like committing myself to reading this this month. I don't know when I'll read this, but yeah. And it's just about three brothers that are redoing a really old inn in their hometown, which is like a city. I don't know. It's like, or whatever. So, and each book is about a different brother. And I have the first one 
and I have the third, which is the perfect hope. So, yeah, uh, the <laughs> I got these from Goodwill, but it still has the 20% off cover price on from uh, Target. And those two, and then I've got. This and all the rest of them, I think, are at least two books in one from her. Yeah. This is Winner Takes All, and it has rules of the game and the name of the game in it. And I'm assuming it's going to be some I didn't even, I mean, I probably did when I bought it, read the back, but I haven't read the back yet, and I'm assuming it has something to do with the beach, summary, something, and I'm sure it's a romance. And then this one has, I think it has, yeah, it has three. Includes three of her favorite novels. The book is called From the Heart, but each story is Tonight and Always, A Matter of Choice, and Endings and Beginnings. And it looks like that. Yeah, there's a little glare. There we go. And then these look kind of old. I don't know, they're just more distressed looking covers. I like them. I think they look cool. Um, this has two stories in it and it's called Table for Two and the stories are Summer Dessert and Lessons Learned. So maybe this will be something about summer and whatever. I'm not really sure. And then this one is Truly Madly Manhattan and has Local Hero and Dual Image. So if I wanted to, I could read one of these stories for the Big City Life prompt. But I don't know. We'll see at the end of the month what I read. <laughs> Um, those two, or well, those, and then that's all of the Nora Roberts that I have. Well, and then let's move on to Debbie Maycumber, because I have quite a few of hers. I already told you about some in the, that were in the TBR. I'll just start off. This is one, she does a series, it's called Cedar Cove, and it was, that was made into a Hallmark series that has already, it's done. I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's done. And I'm not sure which one, where this falls in the order. But it must be a, a low one, a, one of the first ones, because, not really, one of the early ones, because this is, each of them is like a, a, um, a dress, and this is 8 Sandpiper Way. And I think these are more women's fiction with a little bit of romance as the subplot. Then we've got Blossom Street Brides which is another series that I'm slowly, extremely slowly working on but I think this is the last book. But I'm not sure. I don't know. I really don't know. So it starts off 
this book. I have no idea, but the series is all about um, Blossom Street and all the different people at all the different stores. But the main store is the knitting a knitting store. So somehow all the different people that are connected through the other stores come to the knitting store somehow, whether it's through a class or wanting to buy something or something. So, yeah. Or they're just people from other stores. So, that's what this one looks like. And I'm not, I have no idea what number in the series it is. And this one is I Left My Heart. And it says there's no place like San Francisco. So, obviously this is going to be about San Francisco. So where it's going to take place. And isn't that cover? Doesn't it just make you want to go have a picnic at the beach? <laughs> and there's two books in this. Two stories in this. A Friend or Two. And No Competition. I really have no idea what most of these books are about. And then this one, I did look to see when this, I was looking at a bunch of them, and I can't remember which ones that I looked at to see what the copyright date was, but this copyright date was 2017, so this is, and I don't remember what it's about at all, or if it's part of a series, or a standalone, I have no idea. It's Any Dream Will Do. And this is giving me maybe springtime. Just very inviting. It makes me want to know what's on the other side of that door. Any dream will do. So, those were the ones from Goodwill that are by Debbie Maycumber. No, there's still some more. No, I already did those. I already did those. Excuse me, I already did those. I can't even remember anything. Literally. I have no brain. Okay. So now, I think there's, okay, there's Joanna Fluke. I have three in a series of hers, and I don't know what order any of them are except for this one, I know is the first one. The series, it's the Cozy Mystery series, and the series is a Hannah Swinson mystery series, the Hannah Swinson mystery series. And this is Chocolate Chip Cookie Murder, and... Hannah Swenson is the, uh, she has a bakery, I'm not sure where, I don't remember, okay, Minnesota, okay, it's in Minnesota, and somehow she becomes entangled in all these murders, <laughs> they seem to somehow be connected to her and her shop. So, and each one is a different kind of baked good. There's this chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> and then the next, excuse me, next one I have is Lemon Meringue Pie Murder. Like I said, I have no idea what um, number this is in the series, but I did look in this one. Okay, this one was published in 2000, and this one was in 2003, and then this last one that I have, Blackberry Pie Murder, was done in 2014, so this is a fairly long-running series. And I don't know if the series is done or if there's, she's still writing it, or what, I have no idea. So, 
Then there is, what else do I have? I have two books that are Ellen Hildebrand. And I don't know, this is part of a series. You can tell that. But I don't know what the series is. And I don't know what these books are about. All I really know is if I keep touching my nose, I've got a fan on and it keeps like having a piece of hair go through my nose and it, it tickles my nose. So, I don't know which one's first, which one's second. Okay. Okay, I, I just saw this. I, somebody wrote this in pen on the books. So, this one is number two in whatever the series is. And it's Winter Stroll. So, it's at least a winter book. If it's not a Christmas book, it's a winter book. I think. Yeah. Obviously, duh. We haven't been called Winter Stroll. And then this one is number four. Yeah. And I have no idea. A Bat Bay book. A Bat Bay book. Oh, okay. That's the, the, uh, publisher. I have no idea the series. No idea what the series is. This says 2017, so it's not too old. But winter solstice. So, yeah, over Ellen Hildebrand. And then I've got. What else do I have that's more than. Um, okay, I've got one more book that I have multiple from an author. And then I think everything else after these two are a single author. No, not true. I have one that's from the library but it's not one I'm going to read right now. So, and it's the same as one that I, it's in the same series that I bought one of. But I don't know what. So, Okay, this, these are two Frederick Bachman books, and I heard about him, I've heard about him before from a lot of people, but the one that really stood out was Krista at Books and Jams. She really liked his books, so, and she spoke highly of both of these books, so I'm going to give them a try. So this is a man called Uva. 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 By Frederick Bachman. And uh, all I really know is that it's about a grumpy man. I really don't know anything else. And then this is booktube talks about this book all the time um but I also heard about this one from Krista at Books and Jams um this is Bear Town and this is set not in America I cannot think where it's set but maybe Sweden cause it right the second I see that it says that the author lives in Sweden and so maybe it's set there and then there's a hockey team and something about so trigger warnings in this book I think is there's an assault might be I think a sexual assault or something with someone on the hockey team so I'm not really that's really all I know so yeah 
I'm interested sometime to get into those. Um, now the one. Okay. This is uh, okay. This is the one that I got. It is a fool's gold romance. It's called Summer Days by Susan Mallory, and it's not the first. All I know is, I think this might be the third or the fourth. I'm not really sure. It could be way down the line. I don't know. I think there's a lot in this series, so I don't know. But I'm not going to read it because, unlike Sarah at Teaching Books, I cannot stand to read series out of order. She doesn't mind at all. She always talks about how she's reading them out of order, but I can't stand it. Cannot stand it at all. So, I'm not going to be reading this. And then there's this one is A Fool's Gold Romance also. And it's Christmas on 4th Street. And I have no idea what number this is in the book. Or whatever. So, yeah. I'll read those sometime. Then here's the standalone. I heard about these these two books from Elizabeth at Lizzie Fay Loves Books. And this is author Jan Carey. It is at home in Midford. And it's the first in the Mitford series, which is about, I think, it's about a minister. Is this the one about a minister? A father or something. I don't really know what religion that is, but something about a minister pastor whatever okay but that's the that's Jane Carey maybe that's what it says that looks better yeah at home in Midford yeah so I thought I'd, I saw that at Goodwill thought I'd give it Give it a chance, give it a shot, whatever. And then this is a novel by Donna Van Leer. It's very short. It's only, let me see, only 207 pages? Let's see. 207, 208 pages. And also heard about this from Lizzie Fayla's books. I thought I had read it when she talked about it, but now I, I rem the reason it sounded so familiar was I seen the movie, the Hallmark movie that they did based on this book. And it's about a woman, it's a Christmas book, and it's about a woman who moves back home to her hometown with her son. I think it's just one son. Yeah. Maybe her daughter. I'm not positive. I think it was a son. And so she is, she meets her next door neighbor. And her next door neighbor has, I think the way she meets her is somebody's coming to talk to the neighbor but the neighbor's not home or not answering the door or something and what it is is the landlord her mother's landlord wants her to come clean out her mother's place because her mother has passed away and then it goes the main woman that has the son she helped the neighbor clean out her mom's thing and 
putting them through there, they become friends and everything, and yeah, that's, I'll just leave it at that. It's a good, it's a good movie. And one that I'm not really going to talk about, um, this is The Wedding by Nicholas Sparks. It's the companion novel, prequel, whatever, to The Notebook. I almost want to say I like this one more than I do The Notebook, but they're probably like right there with each other. And the only reason I got this was because I can't find my copy of this, and I love this book, and it's in great shape. So, yeah. And then I got this one. This is one I've heard, I want to say, from Chris Day, Books and Jams, but I'm not positive about that. And, but I know I've heard multiple people talk about it. It's The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery by Gabrielle Zavine. And it's, the only thing I really know is I think the main guy owns a bookstore or something. And then he finds a baby or something like that. And it changes him from like sour person to more open and happy I think I'm not positive but the storied life of AJ Fickery by Gabrielle Zavine yeah I just thought it sounded like a good book and did I talk about yeah never mind I'm losing it um Okay, this one is, I think, number three, and I don't know if there's any more in the series or not. Let me see when the, when I, this is 2019. Okay, so this is a very new book. Wow. This is very new. I did not know that, but this is no. This must be the fourth book in the Lavender Tides novel, a Lavender Tides novel, and they've got three three books on the back. So I'm thinking this must be number four. So, yeah, and it's by Colleen Coble, and I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk about this, but I do remember this first book right here, I think I saw it on Hoopla, and was going to get it, or I did get it on, on uh, audio, audio, but I don't think I ever listened to it, or... I didn't finish it or something, but that's the view from Rain Shadow Bay. But this is Secrets at Cedar Cabin. And I don't really know what it's about, so I'll leave it at that. We're already at 44 minutes, so I need to hurry. And this is a book I heard about, I think again from Books and Jams. <laughs> But I think other people have talked about it. I think, um, Lizzie Faye and the one that hosts Middle Grade March with Krista, but I can't think of her name or her channel name, but I think she's talked about it too. It's Walk Two Moons by Sharon Creech, and I know absolutely nothing about this. Other than it's a middle grade novel. And then there's only three more. <laughs> yeah. This is The House on Olive Street. And I don't know if it is a standalone or a series. But it's by Robin Carr. And it's about a group of friends. And one of them passed away. 
and how they're dealing with it. I think. One, two, three. You have four friends, and it says the loss of their close friend draws the women together. Okay. So, yes. So, that, and then Kristen Hanna. Of course, I love her. I've read a bunch of her stuff. And this is not a romance. She's not really a romance writer. She did write some romances in the beginning of her career. But this, she's mostly a um, women's fiction writer. And this is Night Road. It's a novel. And I will say, trigger warning for anybody. This has got um, the loss of a child. Well, I think she's a teenager. The loss of a teenager. So, yeah. Just so you know that. And that's basically what the story is about. Is it goes from the present to back years, like 10, 15 years. It's like that kind of thing from whenever the present was here. And it goes back and forth a little bit. So, yeah. As a lot of her novels do, they go back and forth with the timelines. And then the absolute last book I have to talk about is, and this has a bookmark in it that I did not realize. It's not really a bookmark. It says this book belongs to. It's really cute. I just saw that. That's really cute. But this is Comfort Food by Kate Jacobs. And I know absolutely nothing about this. I might have read the thing, but I think I just saw that it was from the author of the Friday Night Knitting Club and thought, okay. But I think I did read it, but I don't remember. But yeah, something about a cook, and she shows people how to spice up their life or something, something like that. And maybe she spices up her life. I'm not sure. But that's it. I've been talking for almost an hour, so I'm going to go. <laughs> I think that's enough books. I think I have enough books to keep me reading for a little while. So... Happy reading and God bless.